Right, uh, boys and girls, what I want to show you now is all about the uh, oil filter housing. Uh, so you'll see that I've actually got the gasket on there. Your, your gasket might be slightly different. It depends what kit you get. They're all much of the same. As long as you've got the hole for the oil feed to come out, the gasket might be a different shape. You might have to trim a bit off it, but that's what it is. Now, the oil filter housing, like I'll show you, I'm going to paint it all up uh, when it's actually on the engine. But what I've done for the benefit of this video, I just want to show you, well, it's like this now. Uh, I just want to show you how easy it is to get assembled. This is what it consists of. There's a little spring in there which regulates the oil pressure as well. There's a little silver disc on the top there and that just holds the canister in place and allows the oil to flow freely between it. There's not very much maintenance on this at all. Uh, and I've cleaned it up and it's ready to be painted. You can spend as much or as little time as you want cleaning these up. The more time you spend, the better result you'll get. Uh, and I've cleaned that up fairly good uh, for a 50 year old thing. It's not too bad and it'll look a lot better when it's painted. So what I'm going to show you how to do it is you just slide the oil filter housing onto the shafts like so. And then what we've got then is what we've called a banjo bolt. Uh, and it's called a banjo bolt simply because it is. It's a banjo bolt. I don't know why, but that's what they call it. A copper washer fits over the top like so the cup the, the banjo bolt then fits through the housing and we get another copper washer uh, i use these again it, unless they're damaged there's no point uh, it, they're, they're not crush washers they're just there to help it because it's not hard metal on it's hard metal on soft metal so you want a soft metal finish but uh, if you can buy new ones buy new ones if you're on a budget and i think you can use them again but there you go it's your choice you tap the filter uh, housing on a little bit until you can get the, the, the banjo bolt on there. Now, um, you know what the old motto is, guys and gals? I'm not going to keep repeating it, but I'll repeat it anyway. Don't tighten anything up unless you can do it with your fingers first. Now, I've screwed that right down as tight as it'll go, and that's fine for this purpose of this video. I'm not going to tighten everything down because I'm showing you how to reassemble it, and I'm showing you what it consists of and how simple it is. Uh, that's the old element, by the way, that was in this filter, and that's just to show you what you're dealing with. So you need to keep these separate from all your workshop. You clean this part separately like I did. When I wanted it, I cleaned it, and I took that out, and that's going to be thrown away. But I'll also keep this by, I'll throw it away, but I'll put it in a bag, so that when I get the new filter, I'll know that it's the same filter that's going to replace it. So that's, a, that's uh, by the way. Now... These don't come any more simple than this. You've got a housing. If you look in the housing, now the bottom the bottom piece of that housing will be full of sludge on your engine. That will be completely full of rotten, hard sludge because people don't bother cleaning these out. And the simple reason is they don't bother cleaning them out. I'll, I'll point out to you later on. But I've cleaned that out. It's thoroughly clean and it's all been sandpapered down and that will get painted along with everything else when, I, when it's all assembled. But this is just the assembly video. There will be a canister in it when when I've finished. So it consists of like we'll we'll start assembling. We've got a shaft that uh, holds the uh, the filter up into the housing. The next thing we use uh, is the is the spacer, and you'll see the spacer has got a little recess in it, and that little recess is for this little O-ring. So be very careful when you're dismantling them guys. You can buy these O-rings as well. So if you lose one or yours hasn't got one, don't worry. Now that particular O-ring had a little orange dot on it when I disassembled it. I don't know why, but I'm just going to turn it the other way because I'm going to still use this O-ring. It wasn't leaking and it's unlikely to leak now. So I'll put the O-ring on. You might be fortunate and yours might have the O-ring otherwise. You know, he might have dropped off at some point and, and it's been lost. So, But you know it's got to have an o-ring there because it helps it seal. So that's the first part of it. The next part is, I'm doing this quickly guys because I don't want to bore you. The shaft push, pushes through into the housing, like so. We've then got the silver um, spacer and this is to hold the element off the bottom of the filter. Because if that wasn't there your element would be sitting right at the bottom and it'd pick all that sludge up that gets accumulated over the years and it'd pick it up and it'd just dirty as you clean oil up. That's there for a reason and that's there to keep the filter off the bottom. And it goes that way up guys. It goes that way up like so. Not that way. It goes that way up. Okay. 
So that's to hold your element. Now, if this is the part that I wanted to show you. Uh, sorry, guys, I've done that wrong. First of all, guys, we have a spring. The spring goes in first. Then the spacer. That way up, guys. That way up. That's to keep this, that's to keep your element tight in the filter when it go, butts up against this one. It, it squashes them tight, but not crush it. The spring just holds it so it gives it a little bit of tightness. Now, um, what I'm going to show you now, guys, I don't know how much they paid the engineers at Morris and Austin all those years ago, but some clever engineer has come up with this. And this is another one of the small parts that you may or may not find. If you haven't got this part, it's most likely that you'll have lost some of those parts inside there. Because this has got a very key thing to do. Even though you might think, well, that's nothing. That's a little piece of wire. And that's exactly what it is. It's a little piece of bent round wire. And what that does, guys, you slide that down. And it won't slide. You'll notice it's stuck on the threads. You've actually got to screw that down the threads. It's not tight. But it's just there as a resistance and it'll only screw down as far as the bottom of the threads and then it'll and then you can just leave it like that and what happens is it's too big to slide right the way down the shaft and it's too it's too small to uh, to come back out and what that does when you've dis dismantled this from underneath your engine and you're changing the oil and you're getting this out you don't want to be picking this out with your hand so what you do is you tip that over into the bucket get the old filter out and if that little piece of wire look you can see that that disc has slid right to the top if that little piece of wire wasn't there then you'd lose that you'd lose the spring and then your oil filter wouldn't seat properly and your oil your oil filter wouldn't be working at all so the guy who invented that has probably made a, a lot of money for Austin Morris over the years because there's been millions of these produced, millions, literally. Now, the next thing that I would be doing in this case, I would be putting the new canister into there. Well, I'm not going to do that. But what I am going to do, guys, is set that down for a minute and tell you the next important part. Because your new canister will come with this. It's, a, it's an oil, rubber oil ring. And you might think it fits in there. Some people think, oh, I'll just stick it in there. It's around about that size. I'll just lay it in there. I will lay it on top of the filter. It doesn't, guys. It goes under here. And there's a little recess in this housing. And you won't be able to see it. You'll have to bob down when you're doing the car, in the car. But there's a little recess what that fits in. Not only have you got to put that in there, uh, ladies and gents, You've also got to make sure you take the old one out. Because if you don't take the old one out, you won't get a very good seal. And then you'll find, when you're driving along, you'll find your oil will be weeping down the side. And you'll be thinking, oh my goodness, where's that oil coming from? And it'll all be because you've not thoroughly checked that. You've not removed the old filter. Uh, the old, um, you've not remo removed the old uh, rubber seal. And that's all it is. You take the old one out, you might need a little... You might need a little screwdriver like that and you can get it up in the edge and just pull it out because your new canister will come with a new filter anyway so don't worry about that now now you ladies and uh, who are watching the video you might need to put yourself a pair of gloves on when you're doing anything like this because if you're working in an office you don't want to be going to work with your nice polished nails and having a load of oil under them so um some guys like me old-fashioned guys we don't mind getting a bit of oil on our hands we get them all nice and washed and uh, I, you see the wife lets me use her blouses and then I can put them in the wash very quickly but um, you, you, you're you going to get dirty so any of you guys who are worried about you know the environment and getting, it, getting oil in your fingers and things you can get a pair of rubber gloves and you'll find that some people can wear them and that they, they work well with them other people just can't wear them at all um, and, and I'm one of those people I'll do I will put gloves on if I'm going to a wedding or something like that uh, and I'll grow my nails a little bit longer but um, me I just get swarf eager and clean them but you ladies I would strongly advise you get yourself a pair of rubber gloves to, to wear when you're doing any of these jobs now um, I just wanted to show you this guys that's we, we did the, the the finger tight on the banjo nut and and I can I can I can actually un, un, undo it as well if I want to so I know that that's threaded all perfectly well 
The other thing I wanted to tell you guys about the housing. We've already got the gasket on and I can mount this and I can tighten this and this to the specific settings. You know what I need to tighten them to because that doesn't need to come off anymore. So you need your spring washer like so on each one. Check your nuts. You can often see which way the round have come and they'll obviously go back on that way as well because it, if you can put your nuts back on the same way as you took them off they'll go on like quite easily look. And these are another two what when I dismantled these rather than have a bag with all those bits in I actually put those onto the you'd have probably seen them in the earlier videos I actually had those washers and these two nuts screwed onto these two because even the, the, the threaded bolts you can undo and take those off if you want and put new ones in if you've stripped them off or etc. So they'll all come off with mole grips. So you tighten them just up nice and tight with your fingers like so. Now I am going to tighten those up with a socket but not right now guys because I just want to finish off this video for you. Uh, I'm hoping you're enjoying these videos and I don't want to sound repetitive but I can never emphasise enough about uh, doing these up finger tight. These are all loose, we know that, we're going to tighten them, for the benefit of the video guys. So remember, our next job, this is a must, you must then put this in here. You can't see it because it's upside down. But there's a recess specifically for this, and you'll see it quite clearly in the housing when you've got it stripped down. You must take the old one out, don't just put this one on top, don't put this one on top of the old one. You remember there is an old, there is an old one in there to come out first. Now, th then the final job, guys, is we've got all that in place. We've got our little piece of wire on there. Uh, and we've got our new element in. Remember, our new element's gone in. We've got our new seal in the housing. The next job, guys, is basically just slide slide the housing underneath and tighten it up. It's lefty-loosey, righty-tighty for you left-handed guys like myself. You must remember to tighten it the right way. So all we do guys, and that'll seat perfectly well if it's got the seal in. Now none of these are going to be tightened up guys because with a spanner because I've got to dismantle it and I've got to get it all painted and I've got to do it. But I wanted to show you what the video is like because A because I haven't got the um I haven't got the filter element yet and I don't need the filter element yet because uh, we're not putting that we're not getting that part of it done. This is just another one of the ancillaries that we're going to get on before we uh, put the head on. I always like to do the head last and the water pump. I like to get everything else in with the exception of the distributor because if you put the distributor in too early guys when you're manhandling the engine about and you've got the cap on it you're like it's a sticking out part and you're likely to break it so don't use the distributor yet we can we can come to that and and I'll show you how that goes and get that assembled when we come to do it. The starter motor is another thing that we don't need to put on yet, simply because we don't want to be adding too much weight to the engine. If, you, if you've got an engine stand, that's fine. You can get it all done. And if you've got an engine hoist, you can do all that as well. But if you're working on the garage, uh, if you're working on the bench like me, the engines are heavy enough as it is. And obviously, the more stuff you add, the heavier the engine is going to get. The starter motor is a very heavy item as is the cylinder head which I always leave to the last in the manifold because that had, adds a lot of weight to it. So if you're happy with what you've seen guys and you like these videos and I'm hoping you do um, I, I am getting quite a lot of guys subscribing now um, and it's, there seems to be quite a bit of interest in, in this um, build and in general really because you don't see much about these old A series engines on YouTube which is one of the reasons it prompted me to do them. So if you do like them and I'm not boring you too much, uh, then I'd like you to subscribe to the channel. And please do comment if you've got anything to say, guys, whether it be good or bad. Uh, I, I'm, a, I'm an old guy and I've heard most of it before. This might not be the way that you do things. Remember, guys, uh, these are for amateur builders. And I'm not laying the law down on how you do these things. This is how I do them. You might, an experienced builder might do it a completely different way. There is other ways to do them. This is the way I do them. I'm happy doing it this way and it works out okay this way for me. Uh, so if you like them guys, pass a couple of comments if you want. I'll try and answer all your comments if I can. And thanks for the guys who've already said they're enjoying the video. I re it really does make it worthwhile. Even if only one or two people get some benefit of uh, realising they're not too complex, then I'm happy. So uh, thanks very much guys for watching. And uh, so